Good evening, everyone. We will now be discussing the sensory evaluation of strabismus. So what is binocular single vision? It is the ability to fuse the images from two eyes and to perceive binocular depth. Simply put, it is seen from a single cyclopean eye instead of two separate eyes. It helps to appreciate an object three-dimensionally. So what is the necessity for this evaluation? It is important to know the grade of binocular single vision to know about sensory anomalies and to tailor the surgical plan. There are three grades of binocular vision. The first grade is the simultaneous perception or the simultaneous macular perception, which is the most elementary type of binocularity. The second grade is fusion and the third grade is stereopsis. The gold standard for sensory evaluation still remains the synaptophore and is based on the haploscopic principle. It can detect all three grades of binocular single vision individually. Simultaneous perception is the first grade. Slides for simultaneous perception include two dissimilar images that appear as one. For example, one slide shows the lion and the other slide shows the cage. When viewed through the synaptophore, it shows the lion inside the cage if simultaneous perception is present. Second grade is fusion. The slides for fusion have two similar images, but with some element missing in each. For example, the first slide has the tail of rabbit which is missing and the second slide has flowers in the hand that are missing. When viewed through the synaptophore, in the presence of fusion, the patient sees a single image of a rabbit which has a tail and is holding flowers. Third grade is stereopsis. And the slide for stereopsis consists of two similar images taken from slightly different angles. If the images are fused and seen three-dimensionally, stereopsis is present. The sensory evaluation always precedes the motor evaluation. The test for suppression and test for stereopsis are the two parts of the sensory evaluation. Test for stereopsis can be qualitative, which includes the land 2 pencil test and quantitative. Tests for suppression are based on the diplopia principle, which involves a single fixation target seen after dissociating the two eyes. Whereas tests like Belchowski's after image test and the synaptophore are based on haploscopic principle, which involves two different fixation targets seen by the two eyes respectively. Quantitative tests for near stereopsis can be done with red-green glasses or Polaroid glasses or without any glasses. Tests which are done with glasses include the Titmus flight test and the Randot test, whereas the tests which can be done without any glasses are the Frisbee's test, Land test 1 and 2 and the Synaptophore test. All of these tests are done in patients with refractive correction, including a near correction, if any, in place. Beginning with the qualitative test for stereopsis, the LAMP 2 pencil test is helpful in quick assessment of gross stereopsis in children. The test can be done horizontally as well as vertically. One pencil is held by you as an examiner and the other pencil is held by the patient. Ask the patient to touch the tip of the pencil held by him to the tip of the pencil held by you. This test, this test helps to quantify the stereopsis to 3000 to 5000 seconds of arc. The second test which is very useful in children is the Lang test because it, is, it contains pictures and does not require any glasses. The left side of the image shows the Lang 1 test which is used, viewed monocularly. And the right side shows a simulation of the test viewed binocularly. In this, the star corresponds to 600 seconds of arc, the cat corresponds to 1200 seconds of arc, and the car corresponds to 550 seconds of arc. The Lang 2 test is slightly different from Lang 1 in the sense there is a star which is present when can be appreciated monocularly. Also, it helps to measure the stereo acuity up to 200 seconds of arc. Now coming to the most commonly available test in our clinics, that is the Titmus flight test. The test is done using the Polaroid glasses. 
it has a fly stereo test corresponding to a stereo acuity of 3500 seconds the animal stereo test and a circle stereo test only after the after the patient is able to successfully perform the fly test you should proceed to the animal test and further on to the circle stereo test patient wears the polaroid glasses over the refractive correction including the near correction if any the test is performed at 40 cm ask the patient to hold the wings of the fly if the patient is able to perform this ask him or her which of the animals appear to pop out similarly for the stereo test the circle stereo test ask the patient which of the circle pops out of the test card this can measure stereopsis ranging from 800 seconds to 40 seconds of the arc now the biggest disadvantage of the famous flight test is the monocular cues which is the lateral displacement these are present in the flight test the animal test as well as the first row of the circle test so what can be done to eliminate it this can be eliminated by simply rotating the entire test card by 180 degree in a patient with true stereopsis the patient will report that the wings of the fly are receding inside of the book next test is the tno test it is done by using the red green glasses and the tno test has seven plates the plates 1 to 3 are for gross stereopsis and help the examiner to establish whether the stereopsis is present at all Plate number 4 is a separation test and plate 5 to 7 are useful for quantifying the stereo acuity. In this, the patient wears red-green goggles over refractive correction including near correction if any. The test is performed at 40 cm distance. The test is started with plate number 5 which measures 480 to 240 seconds of stereo acuity ask the patient where is the wedge of the pie missing continue to plate 6 and 7 which help to quantify the stereopsis up to 15 seconds of arc next is the random dot test random dot test has three variations on the left side you can see large homogeneous squares with hidden geometric figures called the lia symbols with each of the row having one square which is empty and it does not have any geometric figure in it. Now the second variation is three rows of Lia symbols and only one in each can be seen stereoscopically to pop out. And the third variation is the contoured circles that provide a finely graded sequence for critical testing. patient wears polaroid glasses over the refractive correction including near correction and the test is done at 40 cm ask the patient which of the lia symbols is popping out similarly for the circle stereo test ask the patient which of the circles is popping out of the test card this helps to grade the stereopsis from 400 seconds to 12.5 seconds of arc as we discussed Random dot test helps to grade the stereopsis to as fine as 12.5 seconds of arc. Coming to the test for abnormal retinal correspondence and suppression, two of the most commonly done tests are Wertho dot test and Bagolini striated glasses. The Wertho dot test consists of four illuminated dots, of which one is red, two are green, and the fourth one is white. The patient has to wear red-green goggles for this test. The near worth for dot test is done at 33 cm and the intermediate test is done at 67 cm. The distance worth for dot test is done at 6 meters. The patient wears red-green goggles over his refractive correction. Ask the patients how many dots he can see. The similar test is repeated at the intermediate distance. And at the near distance for the near distance the patient is supposed to wear the near correction this test can be done in normal room illumination or the dark room it is more dissociating in the dark room 
going to interpretation of worth four dot test with the red glass over the right eye and the green glass over the left eye. If the patient sees four dots in the absence of squint, it indicates a normal fusion response. In case of a manifest deviation, it indicates abnormal retinal correspondence. If the patient sees only two red dots, it indicates left suppression. If the patient sees three green dots, it indicates right suppression. If the patient sees five dots, it indicates diplopia or alternate suppression. Coming to Bagolini striated glasses. Bagolini striated glasses do not have a dioptric power and have striations running parallel at 45 degrees and 135 degree. They cause a fixation light to appear as an elongated streak perpendicular to the striations. This test is done at 33 centimeters as well as 6 meters. The patient wears the Bagolini striated glasses and a point source of light is shown in front of the patient. Ask the patient what they can see to show with the hands. Coming to interpretation of Bagolini striated glass test, in the first scenario, the patient sees a cross with a single light in the center. This is indicative of a normal response or an ERC in the presence of manifest deviation. In the second scenario, the patient still sees a single light and a cross, but there is a missing element to the line from the left eye. This is indicative of a suppression scotoma seen in monofixation syndrome. If the patient sees two lights, diplopia is present. If the light on the line from the left eye crosses over to the other side, it indicates a crossed diplopia. And if the light on the line from the left eye does not cross over to the other side, it indicates uncrossed diplopia. Easily remembered, the crossed diplopia forms a V and an uncrossed diplopia forms an A. If the patient sees a single light and a single line, depending on what is the orientation of the line that is seen, either the right eye or the left eye is suppressed. So to summarize, sensory evaluation should always be done before the motor evaluation. The sensory tests as we have seen are divided based on the sensory anomalies that can be tested, for example, suppression or ARC, or on the principle which they are based, that is the diplopia principle or the haploscopic principle. Sensory evaluation thus forms an important part of examining a patient with squint. Thank you for your attention.